Hi students, for your, for your social studies lesson today, since Thanksgiving is new to, not too far away, we are going to be reading the story called The Thanksgiving Story. So we are going to be learning about how the history of Thanksgiving got started and what's the history behind it. And um, this is a short chapter book, kind of like the Magic Treehouse series. So instead of um, one short read aloud book, we, we're going to be reading this book. Um, each day, I think there's a total of like five chapters. So we are reading the Thanksgiving story by Alice Dang Schlitt. The Thanksgiving story. And this is the story of the first Thanksgiving in America. It happened more than 300 years ago. And the first chapter is called Two Ships and a, and a Big Adventure. And if you look on this page, you see like a family and it looks like they're on a ship. You see like some um, wood boards and you see some seagulls and birds flying above. And you see like perhaps a mom and her husband and um, a son and two of their daughters. But that's just something I'm inferring from the photo. Just something you can see. Two ships in a big adventure. It was a summer day in England. Giles Constance and Demarius Hopkins were on their way to America. As they waited with their father and mother on the ship, they could see a great deal going around them. They were in the harbor of the town of Southampton. Many ships were in the harbor. Two of them were taken on food and water and all the things needed by the people going to a new country. The larger ship was the Mayflower, the smaller one was the Speedwell. Men, women, and children were on the ships with their bundles and their boxes. To the children, it was a great adventure. Anything might happen on the ship. Something special would happen to the Hopkins family on their long voyage. So they are a family. <laughs> the passengers on the Mayflower and the Speedwell were of many different kinds. All of them were settlers going to settle or make homes in a new land. Some of them were people that we call pilgrims. A pilgrim is a person who travels to a far off place because of his religion. In England at the time, everyone had to go to the same church. The pilgrims wanted to be free to have their own church to worship God in their own way. So they had left England and gone to live in Holland. Now they have come back from Holland to sell for America. Some of the people on the ships were servants, and a few were hired workmen. A carpenter like John Alden would be useful in the new land. So a carpenter, someone that builds houses or builds like wooden sculptures. Um, some people were going just for a new adventure. Others were going because they thought England was crowded. There would be more room to farm in America. Between the decks, there was a room or space for the passengers. The sailor called this tween decks. In the lower part or hold of the ship were barrels of water and food. There were seeds to plant and tools for planting them. There were saws, axes, and hammers for building homes. Some of the barrels um, held things for trading with Indians. There were, um, there was bright colored cloth, there was beads and knives and little mirrors and all the things they've heard the Indians like to have. And in this photo, it shows a photo of the ship, the Mayflower, and that was one of the bigger ships. Do you guys remember what the other ship was called? The Speedwell, and that was the smaller one, but the Mayflower is bigger. Now the time had come for ships to start on the great adventure the children would like to be on deck and to see the land they sailed away from it. But the settlers were very busy. The captain gave orders for passengers to stay down below until the ships were out of the harbor. Only the sailors could be on the deck while the sails were being set. How crowded it was below decks. Passengers had small mattresses on the floor, each close to the next one. There were small wooden bunks or ship beds. A few people had cabins. Ooh, imagine having to be somewhere very crowded on a ship where there's no room. 
In their cabin, um, Giles, Constance, and Demarius listened. They heard the rattle of the chain as the anchor was raised. They heard the sailors singing. They heard the creak and creak of the ropes as the sailors worked with the sails. The big white sails would feel with wind and move the ship across the ocean. May we go on deck now? Not until the sails are set. More strange noises and more time to wait. Then the ships were out of the ocean. Let's see, and then there's the ship on the out on the water, out in the ocean. And it looks like they left around nighttime since the sky is black. And you can see another ship over there. Soon the captain of the speedwell put up signal flags. These flags told the other ship that the speedwell, speedwell was in trouble. Oh no! She was leaking and could not go on. Perhaps her captain was afraid to take such a small ship on such a long voyage. Both um, ships sailed back to the land. Some of the passengers from the Speedwell stayed in England. Some of them went on to the Mayflower. That made the Mayflower even more crowded than ever. There were, there were 102 passengers on that small ship. Many of them were children. Ah, so the Speedwell did not make it. So either some of the passengers went back to England and then some went on onto the bigger ship, the Mayflower. And that was the end of our first chapter in our um, little short um, Thanksgiving storybook. And the next chapter is called A Ship Sails Alone. Hmm. And I'll read that to you guys next time.